After uploading part one of this CNC build, uh, I decided to buy myself a dial gauge. I've been meaning to buy one for ages, but just never got around to it. Uh, and I can use that to make sure that these rails are as straight and as parallel to each other as possible. Uh, as expected, the extrusions aren't very straight because they're not a precision machine part. Um, but at least I can try and get these rails as straight or as parallel to each other as possible. Um, as you can see, I've taken the x-axis apart a bit. Uh, and that's because there were a bunch of comments on the part one of the video um, saying that I should fill the extrusion with sand. Uh, at first I thought that just sounds like a pain to do uh, and probably not needed, but then I hit the machine with a hammer. Doesn't sound too bad, but this sounds awful. <laughs> it rings like a bell. Uh, and this could cause issues when uh, if the machine hits any resonant frequencies when cutting things and all sorts of vibration issues. So what I'm going to do is disassemble a lot of this machine and fill the extrusions with sand to see if that helps remove some of the ringing. Disassembling the machine was a little tricky as I used a lot of thread lock on all the bolts, but at least it showed that the thread lock worked quite well. So to fill the extrusions with sand, I first 3D printed some end caps so the sand doesn't just pour out. And because some of the extrusions have holes in them, as well as potential vibrations causing sand to leak from the extrusions over time, I'm going to mix the sand with epoxy resin to make a mixture often referred to as epoxy granite. The sand I'm using is kiln dried sand I found at my local B&Q, which is a DIY hardware shop here in the UK. And I chose this sand because apparently epoxy resin doesn't like moisture when curing, and a lot of other sand I found was stored outside. After some research, I found a lot of people suggesting about a 15 to 20% epoxy mixed with the sand by weight. So roughly a ratio of four to one sand and epoxy. So as half a liter of sand is roughly 820 grams and epoxy is about 1.2 kilograms per liter, for every liter of sand, I need to add about 273 milliliters of epoxy. This is only a rough calculation and I didn't stick to it consistently as it's only really to bond the sand together to prevent it leaking out of any of the extrusions over time. To make the mixing easier, I filled the bucket with the sand and one part of epoxy to prevent it curing fast. Then mixed it in well with a drill plaster mixer. I could then add the second part of epoxy to start the curing process, which I think is about 40 minutes for this stuff, so I have plenty of time. Then I can fill the extrusion with the sand and epoxy mixture by hand, whilst every so often giving the extrusions a few whacks with a hammer to make sure the sand settles at the bottom. Also, because the extrusions have these holes drilled in the side, I 3D printed some pegs to create almost a mold through the sand, so I can still use the holes when the machine needs to be reassembled. Now because the sand and epoxy was a little messier than I first thought, I then 3D printed this funnel which fits perfectly over the extrusions and makes it far easier to push in the sand. So here are two extrusions and can you tell which one is filled with the sand and epoxy? I also scrapped the 3D printed peg moulds and instead 3D printed this end cap that keeps the sand away from filling the holes. The next step was to fill the gantry, which because of its double 8080 width design, requires a new funnel for pouring in the sand. This new funnel is a little smaller, but it still works well and prevents any mess. So now that all the beams are filled with sand and resin, it's time to put it all back together, which uh, wasn't easy the first time round and now it all weighs about twice as much. <laughs> Let's get to it. This also means re-thread locking all the bolts because if I don't do that, then they may not be secure. And there's nothing worse than loose bolts on a CNC machine. Yep, that's definitely a lot heavier. <laughs> These are probably going to be the easiest beams to install. Right, beam number one installed, ring test. Hmm. Still rings. I assume that's because the legs are obviously 
not filled with sand. They're, uh, they're a bit too narrow really to fill with sand. Maybe it will ring less when all of the beams are attached together. There'll be a bit more weight then. Right, everything's all nice and tight and heavily thread locked, so it hopefully won't be coming apart again. Uh, I suppose we should give it another ring test. That sounds exactly the same as last time. It still sounds awful. <laughs> uh, the only thing I can think it could be is uh, that it's mounted on the legs still, and the legs aren't uh, as solid. So it's sort of ringing on top of the legs. But there's nothing I can really do about that. Uh, the only thing I could do is maybe add some big ceramic tiles or something to weigh down this platform. It definitely sounds more solid than the legs. Let's get the gantry back on at least. <laughs> oh no. Okay, let's see how much heavier the gantry is. I don't know the best way to lift this because it has to go quite high. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, not too bad. It's definitely a lot heavier. <laughs> Pretty good. Now I just need to secure the uprights because they're not quite straight. I then reattached all the x-axis parts to the gantry and made a new plate to join the ball screw to the x-axis plate. I'm not 100% happy with the design of this plate but this is the best I can currently make with my old CNC machine. So maybe I'll make a new one once this machine is up and running. And with a coupling attached to the ball screw, I can use a temporary 3D printed adapter to drive the ball screw with my drill. So after about two weeks of dismantling this machine, uh, filling it with sand and epoxy resin, uh, I've estimated the weight has increased by about 24 kilograms. It's very hard to actually weigh this machine, uh, but from the internal volume uh, of the extrusions and the density of the sand and resin, I've estimated it to be roughly about 24 kilograms, which has adjusted the resonant frequency a bit. But the machine still rings a lot and it's very difficult to tell how this is going to affect the machine, uh, the cutting quality in the end, as obviously I haven't finished the machine yet. But I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're enjoying this CNC series, then please subscribe down below and I'll see you in part three. Goodbye.